So this is kind of wild. I just got to Hunting Island State Park and coming in Beaufort's about 20 miles from here. Shortly before I got to Beaufort, I noticed that one of my tires wasn't reading, um, which is not unusual. So I, although I did just change the batteries in this, I know the pressure had been good for almost the whole drive. And when it goes off, there's a beep and there's a red flashing light and you can't miss it. And there's an issue with the tires. So figured I'd check it when we got here. Well, we got out and I went to check it and I'll show you what I saw. So this is what I found. It's gone. I know it's dark here right now, but I'll show you. The castle nut is still on there. Um, the brakes are still on there, but everything else seems to be missing. Um, I can see the seal is still back here somewhere. So not sure how that happened. I uh, Two months ago, um, I've had this in storage for the last two months. Two months ago, I took it on a about a 6,000 mile, just shy of 6,000 mile, uh, 5,400 and change round trip out west and back. No issues with it. Um, it did catch, ding things up here a bit and uh, some road rash there. I don't know how it threw tire up this direction, but it did, um, but never really alerted us to it significantly. All right, so here's the deal. Last night we got in just before sunset, back to my RV. This is a 2007 Airstream Safari. Backed it in, got out of the truck, checked my spot and noticed my wheel was gone. Not only is my wheel gone, my hub is gone. Now for some reason, I still have my castle nut sitting on the spindle here, right here. And I can see my seal right there, which looks okay. Looks to me like the bearings are gone. The brake shoes are still here. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's what we're dealing with on a Saturday morning. Um, as you can also see, it did some damage as it came off. It hit right here, bent some things, uh, scuffed up the side. I'll probably be able to take care of that. Now, <clears throat> before anybody jumps to conclusions, I do have a tire pressure monitoring system and I'm gonna show you what went on. So I recently changed the batteries in all my TPMS sensors. It looks like I'm gonna have to get a new one, uh, obviously, because one's gone with my tires somewhere. But as you can see there, I was getting appropriate readout on all my tires, including the one that was gone. Now, every now and then, there'll be a loss of signal. It never has really concerned me. Usually it means the batteries are getting a little bit low and I'll replace them, even though I had just replaced this one. Invariably, if there's a low tire pressure, this thing starts to flash red and there's a loud beep that goes with it. None of that ever happened. You can see these were my last recorded temperatures on the three existing tires. So sometime shortly before we got to our destination, which is Hunting Island, South Carolina, which is just beautiful by the way here, I noticed that I wasn't getting a readout on that tire. Didn't think that it was a huge deal. Thought, well, I'll just check it, make sure if I need to change the battery, I carry extra batteries with me, I'll go ahead and do that. Didn't know I wasn't gonna have a tire. So from here, Hunt is going to be on to see if we can, A, first locate the wheel. If we can't, you know, I don't have great confidence in that because I don't remember exactly where I first noticed that I wasn't getting signal. And it probably took some time after I wasn't getting signal until this thing shut down. And you can see <clears throat> at some point that tire shredded and was throwing rubber up against uh, the tire in front of it here as well, in addition to throwing it back there. Um, Looking at the tread on this one, it doesn't appear to be worn at all. So the question is, uh, how far can I limp? Unfortunately, closest dealers to me are going to either be in Savannah or Columbia. Um, Savannah is about 45 miles or so. Um, it's also it's about 45 miles, but it's going to be about an hour and a half that I would have to limp on this. Um, Columbia is closer to about three hours, but it's closer to home. I'm going to talk to them, see what they think. Now here's what's crazy to me about this is if you look at this, you can see our castle nut's still in place. I'm not sure about that spindle there. I can't really tell uh, if it got bent or not. I have a feeling the threads are gonna be stripped on it anyway, just looking at the misshapenness of that castle nut. Now how that whole um, hub and wheel came off of there with that castle nut place, I don't understand. I know people are gonna say, probably suggest that I haven't been doing my maintenance. I absolutely have. I've packed bearings before. 
packed bearings again um, mid-September. Uh, last week of September, beginning, on, uh, beginning of October, I took this on a 5,400 mile trip out west and back. Had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, between um, early October and the first week of December, where we are now, brought it back and forth from storage to home a couple times to work on it and clean it up. Um, no issues with it. Um, so I don't know what happened or when it happened on the road, but somehow that entire, you know, bearing and the housing came completely detached from one another. Uh, back here, you probably can't make it out, but um, there's the seal right there. Um, and I'm not sure how all this got to be like this. We go down here and take a look. You may not be able to uh, make this out, but the maximum gross vehicle weight rating right here on my trailer is 6,000 pounds. Now, again, I also know per the spec sheet that if I uh, go ahead and drain all the fluids and empty it out pretty much, we're gonna be at about 4,400 pounds, um, which means we should be right in the ballpark of where we need to be um, uh, to go ahead and tow slowly, uh, probably stay in 55 and under on uh, three tires. And what we're gonna do, the, the closest place to us is in Savannah. Um, we're in Beaufort, South Carolina. There's a Southland RV in Savannah. I called them this morning. They were very nice, very helpful. I also called um, uh, John's RV up in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. They're a little further away, but closer to home. They were also very helpful. They suggested Charleston. Unfortunately, Charleston and John's are um, a, a little bit uh, more distance of traveling, and I wanna travel as uh, short a distance as I can on three wheels. So I think we're gonna try to get ourselves over to Savannah tomorrow. So as of right now, this is what we've come up with. We've talked to three different dealers size of our tires i don't know if you can make it out there or not um, these are goodyear endurance which are really good tires i've never had any issues with those i'm not sure what went on but they're uh uh 215 75 our 14s of the goodyear endurance these tires have a uh per the goodyear uh spec sheet have a 2200 pound maximum load at um 65 psi um, I keep my tires right at around 65 PSI between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit uh, ambient temperature. All right, so we've got a plan here. Plan to start with is, well, we're going to head out to Savannah and see if we can limp along. And I'm going to be store, or we're going to be leaving this in Savannah, not necessarily storing it, but leaving there at the dealership in Savannah. And so since I'm not going to be able to blow the tanks out the way I would like, I don't have my stuff to do it, we're going to drain them not really worried about a bunch of freezing temperatures in savannah so i'm gonna put a little bit of bleach into the tank run it through all the lines then run everything open until you know we get as much water out as we can um, again not really worried about it it's freezing in savannah so draining all the lines i think we should be sufficient i usually have a funnel to do this with but i'm traveling and i didn't bring a funnel with me from now on i'm going to leave one in the airstream just in case um, but I cut this plastic bottle, which is going to function as my little funnel right there. Makeshift on the way. So as you can see, we made it here. Um, we are dropping it off on a Sunday. They are closed here at Southland Airstream and RV in Savannah. This is a pretty new facility here. Got some nice looking Airstreams inside, some newer ones. It's probably fortunate that it's a Sunday and we can't check them out. But we're here. We're going to leave it in the parking lot. Um, got it locked up. We're not too worried about somebody running off with it, even though we can't leave it inside the fence because, well, they got to be brave enough to take it like that if they're going to take it. So, um, hopefully we get this sorted out and figured out. In summary, I will first tell you that we did not allow this to destroy our weekend in South Carolina. We really enjoyed Huntington Island, South Carolina. It's a beautiful spot if you ever get to go there. Um, it also is near Beaufort, South Carolina, which had their annual boat parade the, even, the Saturday evening that we were there for that weekend, which was a lot of fun for us to see. We'd never been to that before. But ultimately, with the Airstream, between our insurance and the estimate from the uh, dealership, they came up with about $5,000 roughly in damages that included repair to the wheel well as well as replacement of the axle and the four wheels. Unfortunately, we really liked the wheels we had and since we were not able to find the one that had left on the side of the road anywhere, we have to get four new wheels. 
My wife and I prefer a retro look. Okay. We're going with no, mag no, wheels. No, We're no, going no, with the no, high no, spec no, wheels. No, um, we upped it to a 15 by six inch wheel. Uh, the reason for that, um, high sp we like a we like the five spoke mag. We like the classic look of that. And B high spec was recently purchased by Dexter Axle. We also are adding a second axle since we're replacing one. That is on us. We are also adding a lift. That is on us as well. So those are the additional costs. And once we get this back, we'll go ahead and show you all the changes that we Any made. Any thoughts or comments would be appreciated. Please share if you think you know what may have happened with that wheel and hub.